All right, welcome everyone. It's the July instance of our Seattle Modern Excel Power BI user group meetup. Um, fully virtual today. For those who haven't joined before or one of our meetings, by my count, this is number 108 uh, of our monthly meetings. We started over nine years ago when there was no Power BI. That's where the modern Excel name comes from. And we are Redmond based. So on a monthly basis, we do have space in the Redmond Microsoft Reactor that's building 20 on the Redmond Easter campus. If you are in the area, if you're interested in being speaker and want to be a speaker in person for one of our hybrid meetings, please reach out to me. Ping me through the chat here or email or LinkedIn, whichever way, and let me know that you have a topic, you're interested in being a speaker. Majority of our speakers are MVPs, like Bernard here, but you do not have to be an MVP. You can be um, as a uh, as low level as I am, just an enthusiast, just interested, even if you're a beginner and want to share something, perfectly fine, reach out to me and I'll give you an audience for our 2,700 members at the moment. So again, that's for if you want to be a speaker. If you have a topic that you want to hear more about, also let me know. I can float this with maybe the Microsoft product team because we are in Microsoft in Redmond, you might have access to a suitable speaker and set that up. We have no topics planned for the next couple of months, so schedule is wide open. Um, that said, uh, today we have as a, again a virtual meeting and Bernard is our speaker. It sounds like a more complex, more technical topic, but those topics, uh, especially MVPs are usually very well versed to bring it down to a 200 level, where if you can start Power BI and dabble with it, you have enough information and enough um, context to follow along. You're recording this. I'm going to share this after this meeting um, via OneDrive. And if you have any questions, I let Bernard do his own introduction. I let him uh, tell you how he wants to handle questions, but you can definitely put questions in the chat. I'll monitor those and during breaks, I will let a minimum um, read those out in case you don't want to go uh, or don't have the opportunity to go on microphone to ask you questions. With that, over to you, Bernard. I'm going off microphone and off camera. OK, so hello, everyone, and thank you for making time to be here. I'm so glad to finally be able to speak here at the Seattle Modern Excel and Power BI user group. And uh, hopefully I'll bring something that you can enjoy and, and learn from. I'll quickly share my screen so, so I can show you just a bit more of who I am. As uh, Stephen said, I'm, I'm an MVP. I was first awarded last year in August, and I happily renewed this year. And uh, yeah, anything I can help you with, um, easy to find. That being said, so let's get into today's uh, session. Um, I want to show how to use <clears throat> Visual Studio to code uh, tabular editor C-sharp scripts. Yeah, and so like, but why would you do that? Well, because it's actually easier than trying to type them directly into Tabular Editor, especially if you only have Tabular Editor 2, which helps you next to nothing into writing decent scripts. Believe me, because I, that's how I started with the scripts, and I wish somebody had taught me how to do that in Visual Studio because it's a very, very different experience. So in this blog post of mine, I explain uh, how to do that, but we will see it now live. But uh, don't worry too much because all the explanations are here written as well. What we'll try to do today is something similar to my latest blog post in which I call this industrialization of calculation groups. As you may know me from other presentations, I'm very passionate about calculation groups. And I come out with all these 
weird use cases that are somehow solved with a calculation. With a calculation. Oh, I'm oh. hearing some echo now. And uh, from there, I will do, of course, a, a different one. Yeah, this this one was a, a bit complex. We'll do another one, which is not easy either. And it's one that I haven't really published yet as a in, in industrialized. I mean, I did it yesterday <laughs> preparing for this presentation. It's like it could be cool if we could automate this one. Yeah, this is a very particular calculation group that allows you to sort the matrix when a calculation group is, is part of that matrix. So if you have worked with, uh, this is the most common use case, eh? calculation groups are great for time intelligence and uh, allow you to build a matrix in which you have a column for each calculation, so for current year, previous year, year over year, and so on. But of course, when the boss comes, it's like, yeah, this is great, but I would like this sorted by that column. Then everything gets twisted because the matrix, at least native nat matrix today, don't allow you to filter by a certain column, right? But uh, I did find a, a, a different blog post that proposing some idea. I did some improvements on that idea. But basically, it uses the fact that um, matrices, when you say you want to sort the matrix by the measure that you are putting in the matrix, it's actually using the total column, which is invisible, but it's using that one. And in that total column, you don't really have any calculation item applied. So what it does basically is applying a calculation item to that total column, so that then that order is the same one as the column that you want, and boom, and then you will have this possibility to to sort your uh, matrix by any of the calculation items, okay? So here, this blog post goes on and on and says, okay, we'll need to do a few things. One is we need to add, um, well, 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 we'll go to the final version, yeah. So we need to do two things, or three, maybe. <laughs> we need, first, we need uh, to add a calculation item on our original calculation group to say, okay, what if I don't want to sort by any of those columns and I want to leave the original calculation, uh, the original order that comes from the whatever column we have in the rows. Yeah, so we'll add a calculation item which has this always a constant value. And then uh, the, the, the matrix will then resort to the order of the rows to sort it, so which is exactly what we want. Yeah, so we'll add this calculation item. And then um, what we'll do next is uh, we'll create first uh, a disconnected slicer with all the names of the calculation items of our original calculation group so that we can say, okay, now use this calculation item and now use this other one. So just to, to be able to point which one do we want to use for sorting. And then, what we'll do is uh, create a new calculation group that will do this effect, that it will take the measure that, uh, and then only for that total, it will apply a calculation item. So here you can see, this is what we're doing here. So in this case, we're using a time intelligence. So this is the disconnected slicer, the time intelligence names, and says, okay, pick the selected value, otherwise, pick the no sort one in case there is none, no single value selected. And this is what is applied here. So it will take the measure and apply that calculation item, but only if uh, we are in the total cells. And we detect we are in the total cells because um, there is no one value on the original calculation item. Yeah, so for all the columns, of course, if we say how many values are there in the in the original calculation group, it will always say one, except for the total. And the total will say, well, there's all of them there. So, and that's why we know that we are in the total. And then we'll just, if that's the case, then we apply the calculation item there. Otherwise, we leave the uh, original measure. Okay, and it works. Yeah, so here you can see that. Uh, I don't know, there's a video and here say, okay, well, now it's by current year, now it's by the original order, 
I think that's what I was showing here that you could just go on, but now it's already feel, uh, ordered again by the current year. Yeah, but it works as well if you select other calculation items. Okay, but first things first, how can we start typing code in Visual Studio? Okay, this is <clears throat> not as easy, or I don't know. It's it's it does take some effort, and I had to ask all my friends that were proficient in, in C sharp because I'm not. So what I did is I prepared everything that we need to do in order to be able to start typing and put it in a repository that you can use. It's open and you can just uh, go and, and use it yourself. So um, this, uh, wait a minute, da, 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 da. I'll show you. This is the repository, T-Scripting in Visual Studio. I'll, Wait, I forgot. I wanted to share a bunch of links with you all. I'm going to do this right now. The first link is this same link I'm, I'm showing now. Where is this? This is here. All right. And then all the other links I showed from the blog and as well some of my profiles that you can also check out. Good. That being out of the way. Now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what you would do at your home. Yeah, so we pick up this URL. And we jump into Visual Studio. Very important. You can use Visual Studio as long as you're doing it for learning purposes or you're contributing to a, an open source project. I'm, I'm talking about Visual Studio community. Yeah, of course, if, if you have the <laughs> enterprise version, then you can do whatever you want with it. OK. And then uh, while we're at it, then we need to do a clone repository. And here, what we'll do is just type the URL. And we need to pick an empty folder from our machine. Yeah, here I have this folder. I say, okay, this is good. And just clone. And this should be quite fast. And you see there's not much going on. And now once it's all downloaded, we'll need to do a couple of uh, extra steps because uh, there are certain elements that are different in each machine, and we'll need to do that. Yeah, first thing that will be different in each machine is where we can find some files related to tabular editor. Yeah, also important in this case, even though you might be lucky enough to have tabular editor three installed in your machine, you will need to have tabular editor two as well. Yeah, because we're uh, we're going to be using some files of tabular editor two. That is the only version we can use for that because it's open source. Yeah, you cannot do the same with Tabular Editor 3. Yeah, so here you see we have a solution with two projects, yeah? And uh, here um, you might see in your machine that Tabular Editor and Tom Wrapper 14 have some like some warning sign as if they have not been found in, on the on the machine. And that can be because uh, yeah, things get installed in different folders and so on. So in order to fix that, you need to go to here and add reference. And then in the final section, go to the browse part. And here, if you didn't have them, of course, then you have to go to browse. And the uh, easy way is to just put up data. Yeah, then you with that uh, percent sign in, each, in both sides, up data, and then you just need to find Tabular editor. Do, do, do. Oh, no, sorry. First, we are in roaming, so you need to go one level up, then go to local. Now you'll find tabular editor, the regular one. And here you'll find tabular uh, Tom Wrapper 14. Okay. And the other one is the just the exe file. So you just need to go to, um, I mean, there's also a shortcut, but I never remember it. So just go to your uh, hard drive and look for the 32-bit program files. In Spanish, it's called like this, but otherwise it's program files x86. And here you'll also find tabular editor 2. Somewhere. Tabular editor, OK. And here we need to just find the exe file. Okay. This is, you only need to do this once. Okay? So don't worry too much about it. And uh, you'll need to do that for both the general functions and the TS scripts project. Yeah, so here in references, you see we also have this tool. 
Oh, very important. If uh, you just install Tableau Editor 2, you need to also open it once. Okay? Because there are some of these files that get generated only when you first execute it. OK, so this is done. But if you open the, the code, you'll find that after a few seconds, you'll get some red lines. Yeah, but that's OK. Before we can start really coding our way, we still need to do a couple more things. First one is to build this project. So I'll build this solution. We'll build it. And this will download all the dependencies that are in, in this project. And if you, if you look at it, now you see that we have more things here in this uh, references section. And you will also see that all those lines are gone and that those words are now blue. OK, so this is solved. And now we could already start uh, typing some code, but um, we're going to take care of something else that is also that belongs to this one time installation, so to say. Which is providing an easy way to copy code from this Visual Studio file to Tabular Editor 2. Yeah, how are we going to do this? OK. So here you'll see also what's experienced without that special system. So we scroll down until we find here a, a method called copy macro from VS file with DLL. Okay, what is this DLL? Well, you, you might not know it, but when we built this solution, we created uh, a couple of DLL files, and we're interested in this DLL file from the TScripts project. So we're going to right click on this. And we're going to go to open folder in File Explorer. Yeah, that, that's the project folder. But from here, we'll go to Bean and Debug. And now here we find a bunch of DLLs, which are all those referenced here. But in, inside this, we also find a TScripts DLL uh, file, which is exactly the one that contains our code. Yeah, and it has all the other DLLs around so that it can execute as well. So. You see here it says here for path to the TScript DLL file. So what we're going to do is right click on it. And here we have a copy as a full path or whatever language you have your OS. And this one comes with double quotes. And you can also select the double quotes and paste it here. Yeah. And we still need uh, this will tell Tabular Editor where to go for that uh, DLL file. But also we need to tell where are these two files, Yeah, where, where the code is. So this is a bit easier. So in writescript.cs, then we right click and we say copy full path. Yeah. In this case, we have no double code. So we're going to leave the ones we have already here in the code. This is a TS scripts. And the other one is the general functions, which I'm not sure we'll be see today, but it's still is a good thing to copy that as well. Copy full path. Oh, wait. Um, I, I jump into that. I want to go back here. OK. And now for the general functions. OK, we're getting closer. We're just a bit more, a little more set up, and we're almost done. So now. We'll go first in, into uh, Power BI, and we're going to open Tabular Editor. And we could also open it from the menu. OK. And we're going to open this C Sharp script tab that we see here. Yeah. You can see here on the second tab. All right. So what are we going to paste there? So this is the experience that you'll get if you try to go along, which is, is just what I would do normally is just copy the code. But if you, you copy it like this, you see all the tabs get bad. And also, I have here a couple of lines that I need for Tabular Editor to execute correctly. And I have them commented in Visual Studio because otherwise they will, they will cause an error in Visual Studio. And I don't want to see that. So these two lines that start with the hash R and the using one need to be un commented so that this can execute. And now that we have this, I'm going to execute it first just as it is, as a script. When I execute this, you see it already opens like a small 
window and we if you realize this is these are the same methods that we have in that uh, in that file. However, now I realize that I didn't <laughs> save my file. So if I now selected this, I would get the the old file without those changes. So what are we going to do now is first we're going to save this file. <laughs> now we're going to go back here. We're going to execute again. And now I'm going to say, yes, please copy that same method because then you'll see what the there is some magic going on. If I delete this and now I paste again, now we get the much cleaner code with all the tabs corrected. These two lines already without the, the commenting signs. So these are already good to go. So if I execute this again, it's the same code. Eh? So it works just as fine. But uh, since I want to, I want to use this over and over again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this as a macro, or save it as a macro. And here we'll call this a get macro Seattle. Okay. And we need to um, we need to say in which objects of our tablet model do we want to see this as an option for macros. Doesn't really relate to any of them, so we're just gonna pick model. Okay. So now even if I don't have this here, I can always go to the model and I have these macros and I have this get macro Seattle. Yeah, and I can get also to copy any of the scripts that I have. Okay, so I could copy the same one. You see, I have some examples here that uh, show uh, some building blocks that can be useful for coding your thing. So here, there's one to how to show a, an arbitrary list of things in a list box so that the user can select something. You also get uh, how to do a yes, no uh, user. Uh, uh, dialog, or uh, very important, also how to let the user choose a name for something that you're about to create. I use this quite a lot in my scripts. Yes, so these are already ready, and but you can of course copy that and extend it as you want. Yeah, here I have a very basic one. So just to show you, if you want, if you want to use functions from the other file. But uh, well, well, we'll just start a new one. It's good to start always from the beginning because you saw that by default we get selected the first, uh, the the first script. So that's one click that you're gonna save every time you need to copy the code back to Tabular Editor. So we'll do exactly like the other ones. So our methods don't return anything. So we need to write void, which would be like what is returned, like nothing. And here we should put the name. That uh, reminds us of what is this script about. So in this case, that, that would be uh, sort the matrix by calc item, for instance. Okay. So as you see, boom. When you just do one, you get the other, uh, the other curly bracket already. So we need to do some housekeeping first, right? So before we run a script, we need to check that all the conditions are met. So first, uh, we need to think how things should happen, right? In this case, we have one object, which is the calculation group. Yeah, From that calculation group, we'll add a calculation item, then we'll add a, calcul a calculated the table which is equal to the calculation group and we'll add a new calculation group which will refer to that both calculated group and calculated table. So things are pretty clear. Yeah, we need to start with a calculation group, right? So a calculation group is a special kind of table. So first we'll need to check that the user has only selected one table. So how we do that? Well, there's an if statement, that's for sure. And C sharp, we need to do this, but you see that this already helps us quite a lot. And we're going to go to check what we have selected. We have selected, this is an object. And from there, you can check everything. Yeah? Selected tables count. Yeah. Selected tables count. Oops. Nothing there equals zero. Yeah. Yeah, we need to also make equal with this double sign. 
if selected tables count equals zero, then we're we're bad. You know? we maybe so selected something else, maybe didn't select anything at all. So we need to throw an error. And there's a function for that called error. Um, please select a single calculation group and try again. Something like this. All right. But of course, we also need to stop the execution. And here, well, we already get suggested to do a return. Return is like, OK, end of the story. And since, yeah, because we don't, this doesn't return anything, it's return nothing. Good. But now we need also to check that the table selected is actually a calculation group. This is not that easy, but uh, we can we can find out how to how to do it. Um, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to check. Uh, so here we we are sure already that we have. Oh wait, here we said zero, but actually zero is bad. But anything that is not one is also bad. So instead of equal zero, we're going to say different from one. Okay, good. So if we reach this point, we know that we have one table selected. Now, for instance, if we want to know a bit more. Oops, Oops, I don't know what happened here. If you want to know a bit more what is going on, there are, there's also a function called output that allows us to check things. Yeah? So here, for instance, I can check select the table. How can I check if this is a, is a calculation group or not? We might be thinking, if you select the table, it's because we know that there is only one. And then we can say, yeah, or I mean, if we just type, type you see that even if it doesn't start with this, we get the IntelliSense, which is quite nice. Oh, get type name. This this looks promising. So, and it, but it's a method, so we need to do that. Okay, let's try this. So now if I save this, now of course I can go back here and I can just right click, macros, and here, sort matrix by calc item. You see it's already selected. So I can just paste it here. Yeah. Of course, if I execute this, it will tell me, please select a single calculation group and try again. Makes sense. This is exactly this row. So what I'll do is this is a calculation group. Yeah, you see calculation group precedence and so on. So now this is true. We'll see what it says. You see this returns this string, calculation group table. Very good. So what we'll do now is we'll replace this by an, another if statement. It's also uh, is not uh, this. Then uh, uh, another error. This is not a calculation group. Yes. Return. Very good. So now we reach here. We are sure. Oops. Uh, semicolon. You see that it already tells you everything, even though you're not executing. And I want to show you real quick how different this, the, the, the experience is if you try to, to just write here. Right? So if you see, I mean, selected. Here you get something tables. But Count, no, count is not there. So you see, I mean, it's a very, very different story. So anyway, so that's why I'm saying that this this is much, much easier. So it's not an advanced thing. It's actually something for beginners. Because if you're so good, maybe you you can type there. I can't. So that's why I type here. All right. So now that we have this, um, we need that calculation. So we, we want that um, to get that table in a variable of calculation group table type so that we can access all the methods specific to calculation groups. Yeah, because if I store that in a table, I will only get the methods of table, but that's not what I want. So but here you see is calculation group table. Yeah, and here we already can. We can just use this as a, the variable name equals, and then we can get to the selected table. And of course, but here is it's probably complaining that like yeah, table is not. You see, you 
we cannot implicitly convert this to that. So we'll see as calculation group table. Yeah, this does like a cast saying, okay, it's a table, but we're casting as a calculation group table. And you see this is saying, okay, this is fine, but you're not using that. That's okay. But it's good because it's saying, okay, this variable is not being used later. Are you sure you need it? Well, yes, I know I want to use this because we want to create this uh, new calculation item. Yeah. By the way, I didn't mention how I want to handle questions. If you do have something you want to ask, uh, go ahead. So I don't feel so lonely while presenting. Okay. We need to create this new calculation item, but we'll need a, a name for it, and we'll need a string to no, just a just a, just the name. Okay. So uh, normally all these arbitrary strings, I'll, I'll put them as variables at the beginning, and then later maybe. I, I'll, I'll let the user modify that with the code we just saw earlier. But anyway, so we have string, uh, we have the no sort calc item name, something like this. And then we'll call this uh, no sort, for example. Okay, so that we don't have to type like, like hard coded things in the general code. So now we're going to get this calculation group table and uh, you see, it's so beautiful because everything comes together. I'll calculation item, the second one. Okay. And here we need, actually we need two things. We need the the name, which we already have, and also expression we need to, to define. So here, uh, no, no sort calculation item name. And uh, for the expression, we're going to use just one. I mean, it's, the expression must be a string. Yeah, you see that it's a string. So in this case, we just want it to be a number, but but the expression as itself is a, is a string. Okay, good. We already have now the um, the calculation uh, item already in the in the calculation group. Now, next thing we need is a calculated table that has the expression of the calculated table is the calculation group. Yeah, this will effectively create a calculated table with all the rows of the calculation group, but with any without any of the internal things. So it's just a plain table with two columns, and that's it. Which is exactly what we need to build our disconnected slicer. Yeah. So how are we going to do that? So always when we create a new element, it's good to store it in a, in a variable. So uh, calculated table. You see the, the the type is in uppercase, the measures either variables are in lowercase. That's that's a C sharp thing, but good to go along with it. Okay, what is this? This we need to create is a new calculated table in the model, right? So we're gonna write model dot add calculated table. Okay. And now here we'll need again a name and an expression. Okay, so when we realize this, so we're going to prepare that before. Yeah, we don't want to type too much inside the argument section. So, got a string, calc table name. Here we can choose what the name we want. Uh, one possibility is to pick the calculation group name and add something afterwards. Yeah. So dot name and I go, oh no, not ampersand, sorry. To concatenate, you need a plus dot names. Yeah, so it will be time intelligence and names, which is just the names of it, so no calculation. Okay, and uh, well, we can also put it here so it, it's nicer. Uh, and then we have the calc table expression, expression, which we want to be just the the calculation group. So for that we can calculation group um, calculation group table. But of course it's not just the name because maybe it has a space, so we need the small uh, either single quotes around it. We don't want to take care of that. So we're gonna just uh, DAX object full name. This method will take care of that. So we use it there and then it will if it needs the single quote, it put there, and otherwise it will not. Okay. Calculated expression. Okay, so that's our calculated table. That's the 
thing. So now it's quite easy to just go here and say, okay, um, got a name and expression. Yeah, normally I, uh, I like also to make things a bit shorter, so you can do it this way. And semicolon. Good. Now, um, we're gonna, now that we have both theoretically, and yeah, we'll see that we might get into some trouble, but we'll solve it later if we have time. Um, we now need to build the new calculation group. Yeah, the new calculation group is a bit trickier because it has a difficult expression. Let me check where, where am I? Uh, here. Yeah, we want basically to adapt to, where is it? Um, no, not the formal one. We want to, exactly, this is the one. Yeah, this is the expression that we want to tune. Yeah, maybe we can see that. Yeah, that we saw earlier. So when we go here, um, so it's a new calculation group, so we will need certainly a name. String uh, sort calc group name equals, well, for now we can just leave it as sort. Later we can just, uh, yeah, just uh, use some other code to let the user choose. Okay. In order to create this, we will label, I will name the same the calculation group and the column. I always do it like this. And then the other thing we need, of course, is the expression. Huh? String, which is a sort, calc, item, expression. Yeah, so here the recommendation is uh, start with an it mark and double quotes. If you do that, then when you paste an expression here and it contains double quotes, it will already double those double quotes. You can also have line breaks and it makes things quite easier. So if I paste it here, you see, for instance, you see this one had a single double quotes. Now it has double double quotes, which is good. And uh, we can even make it look nice yeah, because we're, we'll take care of all the tabs later. Yeah, this is the expression, but not quite because we want this to be dynamic. That's the whole point, right? So how are we going to do that? This is something that took me a while also to learn. So I want to share with you <laughs> before you, you, you bump into the same walls I did. So what we need to do here is string in capital letter dot format, okay? This, um, this allows you to create a, a string, but in that string we can put certain placeholders, okay? And then you can provide the values for those placeholders. So here we, you see that we have this repeated twice. So we're going to put uh, in the placeholders will go with this in curly brackets and then with numbers starting from zero, one, and so on. So this is the same one. Okay. Now the next one. So the zero is the real calculation group column. Yeah. This is the disconnected slicer. Yes. Yeah? So that's going to be one. Okay, and here we're going to use two, which is the name of the no sort calculation item name. Okay, now, so this is the whole, uh, we can just go like this, so it's easy to read. So this is our expression. And now here we need to provide all those, all those right? So here, this is the, you said the regular calculation group. Yes, yeah, so this is um, calculation group table. Yeah. yeah, now we need to say, but this is the, the column. Yeah, so it's the first column. So there is a way to access the columns in a calculator in a table. You can, with a square bracket, you can put the name, but since we are not sure of the name that we'll have, we're going to just refer to that by the index which starts by zero, yeah? But of course, this is an object, it's not a string. And again, we want to have all we need to use that in a, in a DAX expression. So again, we're gonna use DAX object 
polling. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, why is this not working? Well, because I'm doing things wrong. First, we need to say we want to access the columns, of course, columns now. Yeah, so if, if Tableau is not playing along, it's because you're doing something very, very wrong. Okay, so here now we say column zero. And now is when you say DAX object. Okay, much, much better. Good. And now the second one is the, the equivalent, but from the calculated table. So is a uh, calc table. What, what did I call that? Calc, uh, no. Do, 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 do. Calculated table is the name. Okay. Calculated table again, columns zero. Dax object full name. Okay. And now in the second one is this uh, sort by that we created here. So is the no sort calc item name. All right. Good. So now we can finally close. This is the expression. Yeah. This is also saying that nobody is using this, but this is okay. We're going to use it right now. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here. Now, uh, um, we're going to go with a calculated, a calculation group table again. And this is, we're going to call this sort calc group, for instance equals and now we go to model exactly add calculation group calculation group but of course the name is the uh what we just said here which is sort call group name sort call group name good calculation group okay and of course, now we need to add the calculation an item here, which was a calculation group item. I don't know if we really need to store that in a variable, but yeah, I think we need sort calc item equals to sort calc, calc group dot add calculation item. Okay. And now is when we need to define the um, the sort call group. Uh, no, here we need to do the sort call group name and the sort call item expression. Yeah, we're going to use the same name for the group and the calculation item because it only has one, so it's no big deal. Okay, so here we we created the calculation item, and in theory that should be enough, don't you think? Okay, so before anything, remember to save what you have. And now we'll go back to uh, tabular editor, macros, run across Seattle, sort of a calc item, paste whatever you have in the clipboard. You see that maybe the spaces are, are lost on the process, but at least we have all everything nice and sorted out. Yeah, especially if you're using external references is when this helps most. Yeah. However, now, because I know we're going to get a trouble, it's saying argument out of range exception. Yeah, this took me a while to, to understand. And it's a particular thing that it's currently a thing in, in Tabular Editor 2, not in Tabular Editor 3. And the thing is that even though we created a calculated table with an expression, it does not recognize which columns does it have. Yeah, so once you save that to the model, because remember, we're executing first inside Tabular Editor, and then we're saving the changes back to the model. So during that execution, you create a table that it has an expression, but it does not recognize it has some columns. Yeah, and that's why it's saying, okay, you're, you're asking for some column, but I don't have any column in that calculated table. Yeah, even though we have our expression. So here I'll do pretty much what uh, Daniel Otiger said did in, in a script of his, which where I learned how to handle that. And is uh, first we'll create a Boolean 
um, variable, which is T2 equals, and then is a calculated table dot columns count equals zero. Yeah. So if this is true, then we are executing inside tabular editor two. Yeah, because in tabular editor three, this will not happen. And then what we can say is uh, we're going to get that first column. Yeah. And uh, the way we're going to do that is we'll declare a, a column variable, which we'll call a first calc table column. And then equals. And then we here we'll do like an if statement that, so say, if we are in T2, this is a weird C sharp thing of doing things. Yeah. So if this is true, then there's some expression here. Otherwise, this other expression. If we are in T2, what we'll do is we're going to create a column so that we can use it. Yeah. So, and and then we'll delete that later because of, of course the column is there. It's just the tabular editor is still not recognizing that is there. So we we'll go to the calculated table and say, okay. Add calculated column. All right. And here um, we're going to use the name. We're use, going to use uh, the same name that the has in the calculated in the calculation group, which is going to be a calculation group table. OK, wait a minute. We're going to need some space. OK. So it's going to be like this calculation group table dot columns dot the uh, no the first column dot name. So we want to be exactly the same name, which is is what we'll have later. But of course, we also need to put an expression, and for that uh, it doesn't really matter, you see, because what we're going to do now is just so that we can use that column, but that the reference to the column is what we want to use. So we get just a little bit like this. And of course, we need also to provide, OK, if we are in, calculate, in tabular editor 3, what should happen? Then we can already just use the um, calculated table dot columns 0. Yeah, first column of the table. OK. And then what we're going to do, I mean, we could just then just leave it as it is. Yeah. Actually, we can do that. Yeah, I mean, otherwise we can also replace that by the variable, but there's maybe no need. Okay, so we're going to save this and see if this already works. We delete this part. We're going to so macro Seattle this and this and see if it works. Select this. Yeah, it did. So as you can see here, we have the time intelligence names, which is calculated table. Right now it has this expression. Oh, wait, we, we forgot something. Yeah, now we'll get an error, but it's OK. We're almost there. This is this is OK. And now we see the sort calculation group. OK, let me make this a bit bigger. We already have the expression we wanted. The indenting is rubbish. OK, so we're going to fix these two things. Because let's. there's one thing, that if I try to save this now back to the model, I'm getting an error. And it's telling me in Spanish that there is already a column called uh, time intelligence in the time intelligence name table. Yeah, Because of course, we have the expression, and then we have a calculated column with the same name of the original table expression. So we need to delete that. Yeah, so we can go here at the very end and go to the if we are in T2, then we're just going to go and uh, calculate it. Table columns zero delete. Okay. Very good. And then the other little thing we saw is that the calculation item is not correctly formatted. And here, okay, so yeah, we're going to use the calc item variable after all. 
So here's how we're going to do that. Sort calc item. And here we'll put a uh, format DAX. So easy. OK. Let's save this. And now we can go back here. We're going to remove that manually. This goes. This goes. Oh. Uh, Yeah, this is OK. And here in the time intelligence, we'll also going to remove the extra calculation item that was there. OK, good. And now we are going to go here, macros, get the macro. Good. And now I think we can just be, I'm feeling lucky. And we're going to save that already as a, as a macro, we call this uh, create sort calc group. See, I don't, I don't know if I already have the other one. And uh, this should happen only in a calculation group table. Okay. Okay. So what happens when I now come here and then I go to macros and create this? Well, I have. My measure, now it has no columns, which is a good thing. In the original calculation group, I have my extra calculation item with the one as expression. And in the sort one, I already have my uh, expression, which refers to the tables I tell it to. And also it's nicely formatted. And when I save back to the model, it is working. And I need, of course, to rephrase this. And let's see if it works. So here in the time intelligence, now I'm going to use the time intelligence as a column. Let me see if it lets me do that easily. Here. OK. So we have the time intelligence. Oh, uh, yeah, this is working, right? Yeah, good. But now. What we want to do is to sort that. So how are we going to do this? We need first to tell it to be sorted by the cell amount. Okay, this is correct already. And um, and then the next thing we need to do is to add the. Well, first here we need to add the names. The time intelligence. Yeah, this goes here. Here, I'm not sure if I'm not filtering anything. Let me see. See, you see here we get uh, the calculation items, but in a different order because in this calculated table, we didn't define the order. But since we have the ordinal column as well, we can just say, yeah, please order by the same ordinal column. We get now in the same order. And of course, we can also limit that to something that makes sense. Okay. And now we need to apply to this matrix this sort calc item. So we're going to bring this. Oh, we didn't change the the single column of the calculation group. Well, no biggie, but okay, we just. All right. So now here we see that now since we don't have anything selected, is sorting that by the by the rows. But if I select current year. This is decreasing from the current year. Also, now it's by previous year, and you see that uh, the other ones are, are not sorted. Yeah. Year over year, also we start the only that is positive, and then we go downhill. And year over year again, pretty much the same, but in a different way. So, this is how you can sort the matrix, and here's this how you can build a script to do that over and over again without too much effort. Okay, that's <laughs> I consume most of the time. I hope some of it was uh, at least the feeling of, of writing code. You saw that it was very convenient. And uh, if when you don't know what you're doing, at least the intelligence is there. So you can find your way around. You have all these pop ups saying, yeah, you have this type here and the type over there. So you can mostly figure out what is going on. This doesn't happen when you try to do this thing in Tabular Editor. Two, it's like there is nothing. There's only Google and Daniel Otiker to help you, and that's very, very time-consuming. So I hardly, I, I really, really recommend that you try this approach if you want to play with scripts.
and uh, and do your thing. And I don't know if there's any question that I'll be more than happy to answer them. Okay, there's a question here. Wait a minute. Is conditional format available? Yes, I love this question. Uh, actually, uh, I have a full blog post about it. Let me see if I can find it. If you go to my blog and you look for it, because this is a myth that is quite widespread. Conditional formatting. You look for that here. Not this one. Yeah, calculation. Written, yes, it's possible. This is exactly the, the main issue. The thing is that it's tricky because when you use that a column, yeah, if you want to do something like this, of course, when you go to the conditional format part, you only see one measure and there's no way to say, oh, well, but just for the previous year column and so on. So the main thing when you when you're working with conditional format and calculation group, you need to think in terms of twin measures. So you need two measures that are basically the same. So you can make just a new measure and say this is equal to the main one. But you still you'll now you have two measures. And the second one, you can put like CF at the end or something to say this is just for conditional formatting. So you put one measure as the value and then you put the conditional format one and the conditional formatting. Then it's very important that the first calculation group or all the calculation groups that affect the value, they need to uh, work on both measures simultaneously. Yeah. So, um, well, by default, they do. But if you have a each selected measure or something like this, make sure that you're including both measures. OK, so even though you don't see it, the the measure on conditional formatting will have that uh, same value. And then um, you can add now on top of all of them, you can now add a new calculation group. But it only works on that conditional format measure. And then you can play with it and say, OK, is this equal to the max value or? Or anything like this, or uh, or you can check what's the selected value in the main um, on the main time in uh, calculation group column, and then say, okay, if the selected value is CY or POI, do this. If it's YOY percent, do that, and so on. This is exactly what this blog talks about, and I invite you to check it out. And if something is unclear, please let me know, and let's discuss about it. Is there anything else? Hey, welcome. So we went through all the questions in the chat, right? Uh, well, we cite, oh, sorry, the speed increased due to intelligence. What is another big advantage of using Visual Studio? Good question. Well, I do like the fact that I have all my scripts together and I can search about it and I can and I can do that. And there's another thing that we didn't dive into is the fact that it's very easy to create a repository of functions that you can then use from your main scripts. With this is the general functions one. So I invite you to check the the article which uh, will explain a bit more on how to can use that uh, general functions. But basically, you can there build a method. It's a bit trickier because then you need to specify uh, what are the arguments, and you also need to pass a reference to the model. But at the same time, you get a piece of code that it's there forever, and then you can use it over and over again from different scripts. And if you just add this uh, using general functions line, comment it in your, in your script, then the macro that copies the code to tabular editor will take care of that and will add all these general functions underneath your script so that the whole thing will work and is it is all in itself it doesn't need any dependency on anywhere so it's just another script a bit longer but it's just a piece of script that you can just uh, share with anyone and and it will work that's another big advantage of uh, um, doing things in Visual Studio. Another question here is: uh, conditional formatting is it available in calculation groups? 
Yeah, this this I already answered now. Yeah. Yeah. Right before this one. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Anyway, so if anyone has any question, burning question about this, feel free to ping me on on Twitter or uh, on or LinkedIn, and uh, we can discuss about it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Bernard. This was very useful, helpful, insightful. Definitely mm -hmm. something new to me, and I think I'm reverberating what I've seen in the chat. People are very, very um, appreciative of the insight. And mm -hmm. again, if there's any further questions for you specifically, there's ways to reach you. Yeah. And, uh, I'm going to stop the recording for this one. Mm -hmm. Okay.